This is some wicked patty, eh? Hey, have you seen Sully? Get away from there. Hey, I need a pencil. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing is a total disregard for the things St. Patrick's Day stands for. All this drinking, violence, destruction of property. Are these the things we think of when we think of the Irish? Hey, look, everybody, free beer! Open your yaps, boyos! <laughs> Hey, what the... Ugh. And away we go. You're listening to Live on Four Legs, the live Pearl Jam podcast experience featuring... Mr. Stone Gossip! Fucking camera in the truck. Mr. Boom Gasper! You can call me L, you can call me Ed, you just, just fucking call me, why don't you? Hello everybody, welcome to Live on Four Legs, the live Pearl Jam podcast experience, and we're back with you, another awesome episode that we have today. Happy St. Patrick's Day weekend, everyone, as that's happening this Sunday. Can you believe it's already St. Patrick's Day? It felt like March started literally yesterday. We got really lucky because... Ha, lucky. Oh, oh, that's a good way to start off the episode. I was going to say because uh, February seemed really short of course it is the shortest month but it always feels the longest and i feel like it just blew past this time so and march march to me always feels like the longest month because you have like it's kind of still winter and it's kind of trying to be spring at the same time right it was like 50 something degrees today but it could snow tomorrow it won't but that's just an example of what march could do it's two of the longest feeling months back to back but it's what six thirty, and the sun is still out. So that's that's not bad either. That is a positive sign. Yeah, we're, get, we're I, getting there. I feel like they moved up daylight savings. I feel like it used to be middle of April or something like that. It definitely snuck up this year, didn't it? Yeah, uh, happily snuck up. I I, yeah. it, it I, was... I mean literally because I was late everywhere I went that day. Oh jeez, yeah. Once four o'clock hit, I, I we were out, we were doing stuff, and I'm like, it's four o'clock. Holy fuck, we. We did a day, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and usually we're, you know, coming home at like three or two o'clock and we're like, all right, what do we do for the rest of the day? Four o'clock. All right. We don't, we don't have to do a damn thing. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, anyway, um, as we mentioned, it's St. Patrick's day this weekend and, uh, happy St. Patrick's day to you all that celebrate that go out and, uh, do St. Patrick's type things, uh, parades and, um, pick clovers and, um, listen to dropkick Murphy's. What else do you do on St. Patrick's day? Watch the Celtics play. Drink beer. Irish soda bread. Oh, Irish soda bread. (laughs) Corn beef, corn beef and cabbage. Yeah. I I have to say, I I admit, I I don't like any of the food that goes along with St. Patrick's day. I'm not entirely crazy about it either. I'm not crazy about soda bread at all. I kind of I like corned beef, but I don't like the cabbage that comes along with it. Yeah, I could I could pass on both. Steve told me the story that one year he was in the middle of making his uh, his corned beef, and he got the call from uh, his wife saying, uh, "You have to come to the hospital now. We're about to have a baby." Yep. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> and, that's and, and I will say I I don't like corned beef, but my brother's corned beef is incredible he does a good job he uses a lot of guinness in it so it gives it some good flavor but well yeah, his corned beef is great i don't think he can do that anymore because he's uh he's got the gluten allergen yep that's true so i don't know I don't, i've never had steve's corned beef but anyway um so we decided to kind of celebrate the holiday here uh by 
doing a show straight out of Ireland, and that is uh, Belfast 2010. And surprisingly, they haven't done a lot of shows in Ireland. Uh, I counted a little while ago. I should have really should have written it down, but it's somewhere. It's less than 10 when you think about it. And when you think about all the shows that they've done in um in england and in great britain in general uh ireland is not up there and and even for this show i think this was the first time they did belfast uh which is northern ireland ireland which uh i kind of learned the hard way uh this week uh thank you to i can't remember who brought that brought that up but um somebody brought it up and said that uh i shouldn't tag a a Northern Ireland post with Bono and Glenn Hansard because they are not from Northern Ireland and, <laughs> and it's completely different. I had no, you know, I, I guess that's, that's like saying, you know, East Coast, West Coast or East Coast in Texas or something like that. You just don't mesh the two, which from that standpoint, I guess I understand. But and Maybe it seemed to be even more severe than that, like uh, something you just really don't say, which I, I learned something too. I, I didn't know. Yeah, so this is strictly a Northern Ireland show. So, yes. uh, you know, if, if you are against Northern Ireland parades and and against Northern Ireland soda bread, this might not be the show for you. I don't know why you wouldn't go to Ireland more, even if, even just for the simple fact, just because Ireland is supposed to be beautiful, why wouldn't they want sure. to frequent Ireland? I, I don't get it. And all like that, but like... There was a rumor, I don't know if you remember, I don't know, three or four months ago, and granted, I, th- I think it was probably an alternative nation rumor, which you take with no grain of salt at all. It's basically, they're feeding you lies, uh, but there was a rumor out there, it, it might have gotten picked up by somebody else too, that they were uh, set to play Slane Castle, which is a huge venue over there. Yeah. Gigantic. Um and it, I mean that would have been such a big show and they were slated to uh, you know the report quote unquote said that uh they would play it in June of this year and we're already in March I mean they would have to be selling tickets by this point if if they were doing a show there uh, I'm going to be honest I'm losing hope for any shows this year because I, I it's feel not like, looking good I feel like there should have been something announced by now right I mean we haven't even gotten any word on an album i mean just that they're kind of done finishing they're working on it there's nothing concrete out there and i i I just don't know well i'm trying to think back to lightning bolt now and kind of the news and rumors that were surrounding lightning bolt lightning bolt and you know when it actually got announced was it a big surprise um i feel like it got announced a week or two before wrigley Mm -hmm. like at least you know, the name of the album, everybody knew an album was coming out. They just didn't know when. Yeah. I mean, I can't exactly remember what the rumors were going around during, you know, when, when right before lightning bolt and minor manners came out, um, at least, you know, at least we had the Wrigley show planned and the, I think there was a show, I think in Ottawa, they were both planned. Um, and we kind of had a feeling that, 2013 fall of 2013 there would be an album but we're, i don't think anybody was too sure of when so you never know they can they can spring it up on you and uh at that point it was probably july or august and they didn't have the october tour planned at all so i want to say i want to say it was probably august that that those tickets went on sale for that the lightning bolt tour in uh in october so i mean they can spring it up at any time and maybe that's how they're gonna do it this year who knows maybe they do something in august and uh spring it up for something like october i mean it's march so you would think that by around this time, you, you know, when uh, when places, your your big co- summer concert venue, your outdoor venue, you know, Jones Beach and, and PNC and uh, over here, um, the Xfinity Center, which used to be the Meadows. Uh, I mean, they're starting to get things booked up. And um, you would think that if they were doing anything during the summer, it would be announced, especially ballpark stuff, because the ballpark has to... 
uh, you know, set up a weekend that a team's not playing. So you can pretty much cross that off. Um, so maybe maybe we get lucky and we get something for fall. They like releasing albums, you know, September, October. So maybe we get lucky. You're cutting out all outdoor venues right off the top. Yes. Because if we're not getting something till October and then you got to think of how big it's going to be because you're kind of closing in on 2021. Like, do they do something really small and then wait for a PJ 30 type tour or are they just going to wait for PJ 30? This, the time, the time frame is it's closing in on them and it's, it it could cause problems. And I'm, I just don't know. We're going to have to see definitely a new yeah, album, but, I, but a tour is, very up in the air it really could go any way right now it could be a good thing though because say that an album comes out in october and they go on tour for a little of october and a little november and i'm thinking kind of what they did around backspacer when backspacer first came out they did all those shows in philadelphia then they did a couple of shows uh i think chicago was one and then they did a couple of overseas shows uh, but really right after Backspacer came out, they didn't do a whole lot until 2010. And that's really May of 2010 was the, uh, uh, the U S tour where they did MSG. They did, um, you know, all these other places. I think they did. Yeah. I was, I was at that Hartford show. They did Hartford, they did Buffalo and they did a lot of the East coast stuff. And I think later on they would do West coast stuff. Um, and that's, in the summer, that's where this show lied. Uh, so maybe it's something like that. And maybe it's not like how they did lightning bolts at all. Um, again, these things can spring up and you know them, they can sell tickets immediately. So they don't have to worry about that. It's just, I think at this stage in the game, they're definitely planners. Yeah. Yeah. But as we were just saying, these months are going fast. Something's they are. got, something's got to come up. 100 percent. i'm getting uh, antsy i'm getting real antsy but you know it's kind of a good thing this year at least for me you know because i got i gotta i gotta get married this year i gotta get married in september so um that kind of right now september looks like it could be out of the question especially because i'm getting married the week before ohana so I just, uh, yeah I, I i don't know i have a feeling with eddie's uh solo stuff going on i i I think he has a a few too many for them to be touring any earlier than september so i think you're going to be safe yeah that's i'm i'm thinking i'm thinking we're good at this point i was i was really i don't know i i I guess i might have had a dream that uh you know they were playing hartford on the 21st which uh would have not been a dream it would have been a nightmare so (laughs) you know uh but anyway uh so that kind of takes us to Belfast 2010. This is the last show that they've done in Ireland. They did two Ireland shows. They did Dublin the night before and then Belfast this night. And in almost 10 years, they have not been back, which is really, really strange. I was going to mention the crowd uh, later on, but you you know that they're they're loved there and uh, i i don't know why they would hold off on going there when you when you listen to this bootleg and you hear how much the crowd has wanted them to be there for so long and yeah, yeah they just don't go back right especially belfast which we said before, it's northern ireland uh, yeah i'm i'm specifically talking about belfast so if you weren't at that show you screwed yourself Right, Uh, because, I mean, you know, the European tour last year would have been a perfect opportunity to go up there. They were in London. They were Mm in, I don't know, Spain and uh, uh, Germany. Yeah, they were in Germany last year. Uh, Portugal. They were in Europe. Just just do it. Just go and do it. Just figure out the logistics and do it. I I wonder... I I don't know what venue this is. Uh, The venue name... It's called Odyssey Arena, so I don't know if that's an outdoor. I I forgot to check. It looked like it was an indoor one. I think it's indoor, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I was going to say maybe there aren't a lot of good indoor arenas to do, but it looks like that's not the case. So, um, All right, why don't 
we kick this off. This is a fun show. I had, I had a lot of fun listening to it, and it's another one. Uh, if you remember, I've, I've mentioned on the show before, sometimes I like to just kind of pick random stuff on YouTube. And this one was a little random, and it kind of worked out perfectly because I was looking for a show for Ireland for St. Patrick's Day weekend. Right. Um, and it worked out that this was on YouTube, and I was able to do a full drive and, and listen to it. So uh, I enjoyed it, and I hope you guys will enjoy it too. So sit back and enjoy Bill Fast 2010. holding back I, I i kind of uh i kind of introed while i was i was teeing this back up i kind of did a little irish accent i've really held back I, irish is probably one of the ones that you're gonna say sounds like australian yeah but everything else that you do sounds irish so when you try to do an irish one it, or scottish it might sound yeah i don't know like from minnesota or something <laughs> i'm afraid to to hear it but at the same time i know it's going to pop out at some point and i'm kind of looking forward to it as well i won't it won't be as like as moving as glenn hansard it won't <laughs> sound like that um it'll probably sound like the guy at the pub who uh just watched his football club lose uh <laughs> it'll probably sound a lot like that so yeah we'll we'll see we'll, Let's get into the show a little bit, and we'll see how uh, how I feel about this, and then I'll bring it out in a little while. So, uh, obviously, you just heard sometimes, and that was the opener of the show. Um, always appreciate this, and always happy to hear it, um, especially because you get stuff like Long Road and Pendulum, and released to an extent, I suppose, and they kind of invoke, I guess, somewhat of a depressing start to the show in a way where yeah you can sing along to them but it, it you know these songs have deeper meanings to people and it can evoke more of an emotion than so- sometimes uh sometimes it's just fun you know i th- i think it sets a different tone you're right a lot of the a lot of those songs have a lot of deep meanings for people and some of those songs are even people's favorite songs uh, like out of their whole catalog and you're right sometimes is just different enough to where you could get that slow build itch scratch it's not really a slow song but it's not it's not a dance song either it's just it's a fun way to to bring them in it's a lead it's a good lead in i feel like it's more of a part participation song than like pendulum i wouldn't say that then then release but yeah I, I would say maybe more than a few others what did you think about and i and i sort of wrote here I, I thought eddie's voice sounded really good on sometimes and then i kind of wanted to make it a theme and then i'm like all right you know it's not it's not really a running theme it changes song to song the way he sounds it changes big time song to song in the show yeah yeah and there's a reason for it that he gives an excuse uh, for it, um, which is a weird excuse because they played Double in the Night before, and his excuse is jet lag. So yeah. either, like, they really, they got there right in time for Dublin and they had no time to sleep, which I'm assuming is probably the case because I guess if somebody can help us out here. Uh, Dublin to Belfast is only a two-hour drive. Okay, then that's not bad. Um, okay, so so I guess... 
I guess just the traveling over there and then doing two shows back to back. I'm sure they're not getting much sleep anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand, I guess. Yeah, I, look, you know, I'm sure he doesn't see it as an excuse. I mean, he's the kind of person that's like, if I fuck up, I fuck up. I sound bad. I sound bad. But um, maybe, maybe yeah. they were just feeling jet lagged. Well, there, there are certain songs here specifically uh, that I think were chosen because of his state, the state of his voice. I'll put it that way. Okay. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Uh, some, some I do and some I don't. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to see what you, what you uh, think the case is for, for those songs. And then I'll, I'll be able to tell you because there are some I could see that being the case, but definitely not all of them. Okay. Um, all right. Then number two here is do the evolution, which um, sometimes you see as number three, at least in my uh, going back and checking, you see it as number three, but I, I, you don't see it a lot as number two. And this is another really good spot to hear. This is, is this is, a uh, Swiss Army knife, if there ever was one, you know, this and why go in my mind are the best tools to just kind of throw in and just say, hey, how do we get from sometimes we want to do sometimes, but we also want to do animal, but we don't want to do them back to back. So how do we get there? And you get yeah. there from do the evolution. So, yeah. And, and, it, and it was good. I do like the spot. It was uh, surprising to hear it so early since we haven't been hearing it so early lately. But the transition, the transition was good. It does, it does work well. But as we've heard a few times in the past couple months, I, I couldn't get "Hail Hail" out of my head, and I thought maybe "Hail Hail" would have been a little better, which, <laughs> which we don't get in the show. But yeah, do the evolution works? I think I would have preferred "Hail Hail." I think it would have transitioned just a little bit better. Well, you, you're you're stuck on no code there. I know. I can't get out of it. I I understand. <laughs> I understand that. Um, it's uh, but it's just also, it's in, it's ingrained, you know. But also, when we were doing the research on Moline, we found out that there weren't a real lot of shows where they went from sometimes in hell hell. So right, you, but it's it, they put it on the album like that for a reason, and the reason is because it it flows it, together it, so it's, well. It's yes. perfect. It's perfect. But do the evolution isn't too far off, so it is still a very good spot for it. Right. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna nitpick. I'm just saying, you get so ingrained with how that sounds, and it's tough to break away from it. Yeah, uh, I guess I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, you know, you do get attached to how certain things are played together on the album, and even you know, uh, maybe I'll think of it later. But there there is a good example of it somewhere where. I've seen a couple of shows and it went from, I don't know, just to, for shits and giggles from release to corduroy. And mm. you know, that that's how I would expect them to open a show or something like that. That's not a good example. Cause that, that's not true. Uh, but well, there are a, examples it is, of, it is a pretty good example though. I think. Yeah, no, it's not I, a bad I example. It, it's I just not it's true in my example. case. It, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. That's fair. It's just, it's, it's not the one I wanted to come up with. It was just a simple one that I think <laughs> but, people but, can relate to. But I'm with you on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why am I backtracking? I'm just like, I'm ready you for the fight. You made a good point. <laughs> I'm ready for the fight. That That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to quote somebody from Belfast, Northern Ireland, my name is Finlay, or I love to fight. There it is. <laughs> I won't be the only one, I promise. You tried, though, on that one. That wasn't natural. The natural one is so much better. Let it flow, I, uh, Randy. I will try flow. again. I promise. <laughs> I promise I'll try one more time before yeah. we're done. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, if you're watching. I don't know. Did you watch the YouTube video or no? Yeah. Well, I didn't really get to watch it. I, I when I was driving, that's how I listened to it. So I wasn't able to really look look at it. But okay. Um, yeah. The they're going ape shit in the pit. Uh, yeah. This is oh, oh, general yeah. emission, and they're, yeah. Um, yeah. The the crowd shows it came to uh, show the Pearl Jam love many many times in this show. Absolutely, like almost like Pearl Jam had never been there before. So, I think you, I think uh, you're onto something there, Randy. <laughs> it might be. Did we talk about this already? I don't. Uh, you know what? My memory doesn't serve me correct. <laughs> Can we do like a little? Uh, rewind back into the show can we can we start from that point again no 
we don't have the technology. We'll we just wait till it. it comes out, and then we could literally rewind it if we want. Man, I no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we move on into Animal. I kind of teed it up before, and it's a very standard spot. I think out of all the times that we've covered Animal, it's usually going to be anywhere from two to four. Uh, last week, I think we covered it, and it was somewhere towards the middle uh but it's also vitalogy era where things are you know they're more movable parts uh here things kind of have their their spot in some spots so animal very standard i think ed's voice is still sounding fine but um not full on this one like Mm -hmm. i would say like 75 to 80 percent like mm-hmm. pretty good. I wouldn't notice if I'm hearing it live, but on the bootleg, I can tell. Right. I yeah yeah definitely. I I feel the same way. But yeah, this is this is the spot for it. When they do like a why go here and then they put animal later, it drives me absolutely nuts. This is it. This is where I want it, man. This is perfect. And yeah. uh, I I agree with what you what you said. I I think live, it's uh, yeah. You probably wouldn't have noticed it. Uh, that's a good way to put it. It's we were able to rewind and listen to it a few times. And you're saying, oh, is that he? Is he tired? Is he? What's going on? But it's not ruining anything for me. No, not at all. It's just you know through through the bootleg and through the the challenge of trying to get through uh, you know one bootleg a week and and spot the differences. Uh, you know we found Waldo for this song. It's just it's <laughs> a minor minor critique. So uh, after Animal, Ed is already talking to people and he asks how everybody in the back is. Says he can't see them, and then Ed keeps saying, "Can we stop that squeaking? Can we stop that squeaking?" Yeah, he keeps getting a little bit of feedback. I thought it I was wonder, funny. I yeah, I, I I mean sometimes he I, I you call it in wrestling breaking kayfabe. And that means it's it's breaking your character, uh, and that's kind of his breaking kayfabe, I suppose. Um, you know, taking a second to address actual like on stage issues yeah. on the mic, which he doesn't do a whole lot, but it's still I don't know when he does. Sometimes he sounds like a real dick when he does it. He doesn't have to tell the stage guys that there's feedback; they know it is. They'll get it out, right? But. Uh, this was this was kind of funny, I thought. But in, in the same way, like, if they're... It, and working in TV, I kind of... Or used to work in TV, I kind of know this. But, like, if you have, you know, an anchorman or whoever on camera and uh, there's a problem in their ear, you can't just stop mid-show and be like, I can't hear something in my ear. Uh, right. Sorry, sorry, audience, I can't do... You know... I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. I guess you get a little more leeway when you're on stage and, you know, you're the focal point and people are just kind of at your every word and you're not pressed for time like you are on TV. Yeah, I guess, I the, I guess the stakes are lower when you're doing your own show and... Yeah, you kind of have the run. You have the run of it if you want. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little too much time on something as very minuscule as that. But I, you know, <laughs> this so this is where he says uh, it's the first time they traveled to Belfast and it's the first time in Northern Ireland. And he asks everybody not to jump off the balcony because it's his job. There's a reason <laughs> why he said it. I'll get to that in a sec, uh, which is now. Um, he said uh, it's a direct reference because the night in Dublin, somebody jumped off the balcony. Just seems if reckless. you can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and I only know that because uh, somebody chimed in on Facebook and uh, said that they remember being there the first night and uh, somebody jumped off the balcony oh, and uh, came up pretty unscathed, That's apparently. Impressive. Yeah. Uh I would love to go back to that show and, and find out when it happened, uh, if it happened mid-song, did Ed address it? Uh, yeah. But as long as everybody was okay. Then <laughs> yeah, I guess that's all you could ask for. <laughs> uh, Ed's right. It is his job. And uh, what do you do in a job? You fix things. That's my segue into the fixer. Um, 
I guess we we haven't done like a true backspacer show in a while, right? I can't remember the last time we did one. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, there's so much to cover. There's so much that we're, we have interest in learning uh, that, you know, backspacer era for me, for both of us, we, we lived it. So we kind of, I think most people that are listening to the podcast probably lived it and still, it's still vivid in people's minds. So going back and, hearing something like the fixer which is not you know when it came out i liked it and but right now you know as i see it right now it's like never one of my favorite songs but because we haven't covered it in so long i can sit here and say i kind of did i kind of dug it you know you know my take i I like got some way more and i but no you're right I, i don't dislike the fixer and it was cool. Like, one, I wasn't sure how it was going to work in this spot. So I was very eager and interested to to listen to it and listen to the flow here. But, man, dude, this this sucked all the energy out for me. I, I, did, I really didn't like it. I didn't care for it. And it wasn't a performance thing. This was just wrong, wrong place. And, I 100% agree. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to, as, as we go on a little bit further... Uh, this there's a lot. Uh, it, it starts the lopsided feeling to uh, this first half of the first set. It, it really stuck with me. It was like it, it makes other parts of the set feel a little out of place too because of how lopsided the, the first half is. And the fixer was the 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 point that that started that feeling for me. I just think it was a little early to yeah. stop and and say hello. And then go into the fixer. And I, I wonder if that was done uh, cautiously because Ed knew that it wasn't going to be a great, or predicted that it wasn't going to be a great night for him. So he he talked a lot this night. He yeah, it's possible, possible. Sort of break things up, but and if you're going to break things up and kind of change up the trajectory of what you're doing, then fixer, I guess, is fine. But honestly, uh, you know, we we are both fans and i think you know 99 percent of pearl jam fans are 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 huge fans of the momentum in the set and how songs you know five or six songs in a row to start up you get after animal if you go into animal into corduroy into something else that's pretty big and and epic uh fixer sort of feels a little flatter um and it and then the next song is tremor christ and it's not like tremor christ is bad or anything like that but it doesn't give you that opening punch like that three punch would sometimes do the evolution and animal are great but it needed it needed to kind of get another punch in uh to to drive it home and uh to get the the point in the round so to speak yeah tremor christ has absolutely no pizzazz here because of the fixer before it it, right. it was totally dragged down again it, it but it sounds really good it's just the there's no momentum it's really i don't know this was strange it's really strange for me now i've seen i've seen this happen before i think maybe once i've seen the fixer in the number two spot would you be okay mm. if they went sometimes fixer do the evolution animal talk trevor christ did i say trevor christ oh not I, trevor exploiting trevor <laughs> christ <laughs> none of you will get that <laughs> now i i wouldn't um because i think the better single to do which you will disagree with is is when it's that early would be would be got some because it's faster it's got a lot of momentum the fixers just i don't know that i i feel like the fixer is a like a like a mid set sing along transition song, and yeah. having it this early is it's really, really sticking out in a negative way. The one thing I will say about it that I guess I noticed from this version is the entire band. I can't tell if Stone participates or not, but is the entire band doing backup vocals on this? Oh, the yeah yeah part. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know for sure Jeff and Mike do. But and then Matt was definitely doing it, doing it too. I don't think Matt does it all the time though, because 
sometimes the backup is a little lower and Matt's mic is usually pretty loud or louder than Jeff and and Mike. So I thought I saw at one point that there was an angle in the YouTube clip where you saw Matt and you saw both Jeff and Mike. Yeah. I, I, well, I think I think at the end it gets real loud. That's probably all of them. Um, OK. There might have been just a few times where Matt just didn't do it. I don't <laughs> But yeah, no, I I, th- I think at some point they all they just all all scream that part. The other thing that I that I had mentioned here, and this is really I guess the first time I really felt this. Ed really felt winded toward the, towards the end of the song. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it sounded like he was really trying to catch his breath. That like he was, um, he was just trying to have fun. I think he's in a very fun mood. He's in a very mm-hmm. happy go lucky mood. Uh, huh, lucky again, huh, huh, uh. huh. I did it again. Um, <laughs> but, like, I think it was just sort of stamina for this one towards the end and the yeah, yeah, yeahs, you know, the fight to get it backing. It just, I think he kind of. He was, yeah, he's, does the thing where he'll skip words and he'll just, he skips around. Yeah. Because he catches his breath a little bit. This was this was a good example of him doing that. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes it, it it's part of the charm, and it's okay, and you don't really notice it. But again, yeah, it, it wasn't ruin it wasn't ruining anything. It was no, because at the same time too, he was all over the stage. They're having a good time, and maybe they are a little jet lagged, whatever. But the performance is there. It's it's not it's not unbearable to listen to. It's not like he's screaming out of tune to keep up with himself. It's right. It's 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 it's. it's it's more of a performance than it is a I, I can't do it type thing. So strangely, because I, I normally would not do this, but this gets the pass for me because it still sounds pretty good. I'm trying to reason here with the theme that at least Ed is poised for the show that he was on jet lag. So that's yeah. kind of why I bring that up because I, I notice there are just moments like that where if you want to say or a little remnants of jet lag, then maybe that's, that's part of it, but yeah, it's um, a good excuse and I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, all right. We kind of dipped into tremor Christ a little bit, which is awesome. They did tremor Christ. And, you know, I think a lot of people that, that wrote to us, thank you to all of you that did. Um, a lot of people said that this was a highlight of the night because they never seen it before. Um, you know, you got to think if people are, uh, going there from Europe and they don't do a lot of European tours or, or whatnot then, or, you know, very few shows say somebody can only do the London shows, then it's not going, there are not many opportunities that you're going to hear something like Tremor Christ in 2010. Uh, so hearing it here, I, I can see that it's absolutely a great moment for people. A hundred percent. I totally agree. It's just, it's just a shame it came after sort of a, a dud. Yeah. Or uh, what became a dud because of its placement. So, you know, I guess I wasn't able to appreciate it as much as I normally would because the flow wasn't there for me. Speaking of flow, you know what I'm about to say, the Gossard flow. <laughs> oh, there's a few times I actually I would look down and I. I would say, wow, I've never seen Eddie play that guitar. I said, oh, no, that's Stone. <laughs> this was back when Stone had, he had the long hair, but he was also like 89 pounds. Yeah, he looks 20 years younger. I remember, actually, this is funny, um, PJ20, I remember he like, uh, at the end, they were all doing a bow. He He had put a jacket on. And he had put like a ponytail up or something like that, and he had a cigarette in his mouth. It was it was it was towards the end, and I'm like, "Who's that on stage? Who's that on stage? Is that <laughs> Brendan O'Brien do, doing about? No, it's fucking Stone. It's Stone. Yeah, he looks sick. I literally said that out loud and I s- smacked myself. You know, <laughs> nine years later. Uh, and I I also wanted to say that uh, Stone is giving me like full stonage on this show too he's he, he was he was great on this one he's he's confidently shuffling as opposed yeah, to yeah this is a it was last a funny week show it's kind of funny time for stone you know he's all long hair and he's skinny and he's he's kind of doing his 
stone shuffle like he used to do in the early 90s and and then now he's back to like regular weight and he's got the short hair and he's kind of like dad stone again he's dad stone yeah this is <laughs> this is kind of like re- rebel dad stone yeah he's still a dad but he's kind but he's, of like but he's rebelling he's against super being cool a dad. yeah <laughs> he he went out and bought a porsche <laughs> you know the midlife midlife crisis stone put it that way yeah. um any little things on the performance i thought the performance was great i i, I just think maybe with Tremor Christ, pace it out a little more. Uh, um, just a little a little bit faster than I like. Uh, it just, when it's paced out, it feels like there's more mystique to it. But um, honestly, it, it didn't ruin it for me at all. Um, and Matt at the end, he's just wailing away. It's, in, it's intense, and it's probably my favorite thing about the song. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. Kuden. Uh... This is another weird one for this little, this three song section here. Yeah. Uh, it's low light and <sighs> low light at this time was really the band started. This is really when the band started doing it more. Uh, it was starting to become part of the repertoire. I remember I went to three shows that year and they played it at two of those three. Uh, and it was one, I, I guess I, <laughs> I didn't expect to hear once. And when I thought I heard it once, I wasn't going to hear it again. Uh, I also wasn't in love, in love with the song at the time. I, I, I liked it. Okay. But, um, it wasn't until way later that I realized how good the song was. Um, but we know it and you love it as an opener. I love it as like a two or a three, but here it kind of, it just caps off a section of just it's still hurting from fixer a little bit yeah this sucks this sucks man because it's uh, again it's a it's a it's performed fine it's 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 not anything groundbreaking it's not a groundbreaking performance of low light it's it's more of just let's do the song it's not a real memorable one and I'm sorry if you were there and it is a highlight for you. I completely understand that, but uh, th- not in this spot for me. This is, oh man, this is, I don't, it's like, it's like a bummer. This first like six, six songs or so. I mean, they're it all feels, performed, they're all it performed feels like there well, should but be, right. It feels like there should be 12 songs at that point. It's just so up and down. I don't, I, I don't get it. <sighs> yeah. I, I don't know either. Um, maybe they're just they're trying to they're trying something different, and maybe it's just sort of giving Ed some uh, some early energy. And I, I didn't think that he sounded very good on this one. I, I thought that it again um, melody for the song is so important, and how the song is paced is so important. I think for a lot of these songs and for some of backspacer and some of those shows that I, I've, I've realized that a lot of these songs are just kind of, I don't want to say rush through, but they sound like they're a little paced a little faster. And I right. don't like to hear low light that way. I think low light is, should, is very melodical. And um, I thought this was pretty fast. And I also didn't really, I didn't get to hear Jeff. Oh his no! His, yeah, his his microphone was like off for this. Yeah, yeah. I and looked at the video a few times to make sure he was even singing the parts that he wrote for himself. Yeah, I thought it wasn't in sync. Yeah, Very just, weird. he just he just wasn't there. There was no presence to his mic. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's kind of the the dull section is kind of over now, and we're getting into. Uh, the stuff that we should be getting into at this point. Um, but but Ed, it's let, let's just reiterate, it's not really even dull. They're not dull songs. It's just the placement is wrong. That Yes, you're 100% it's, right. They're not dull songs. It's just a dull section. But it is dull. I, I just, oh, it's so weird. <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, you bring up a good point, and I didn't even think about that aspect while I was doing notes. So you've sort of changed my mind, I suppose. <laughs> Um, Ed tees up the next one by saying, this is Mike McFrucking McCready here. Uh, he's an Irishman. 
Um, and that brings us into even flow because anytime he tees up Mike McCready, it's it's gonna be even flow. Um, I just wrote the band has a really good presence about them. Uh, Jeff is really into it, and obviously Mike is into it because it's even flow, and uh, that brings the energy out of him. Uh, Mike like Stone looks a lot younger than he is on this show. He's got the jet <laughs> right. black hair going. Yeah, yeah. And which I I don't like that Mike. I like I like the new like like silver haired Mike. Yeah, yeah. Um, like two, 2000, 2018 Mike is my is my new all time favorite Mike. That's what my, my dad used to say when, when I was a kid and, and, you know, my dad was just, you know, transitioning from, uh, you know, black or brown hair to gray hair. Yeah. I would say you, you have gray hair. And he said, no, I have salt and pepper. Oh yeah. Salt and pepper is a good look, man. Uh, salt I, and pepper, Mike. I think salt and pepper is a good look. I a hundred percent agree. Don't it's, try it's... to hide it. Gentlemen, keep, keep it going. <laughs> you're, uh, you're speaking to our demographic here. <laughs> The, you know, the 40 to 50 range. <laughs> um, Sto- Stone is the only one on stage that kind of seems a little more relaxed in this one. Um, but it's just, uh, it kind of takes you from low light and it kind of kicks you in the ass a little bit and uh, allows the pit to get going again. Um, one of the other things, they, they kind of teed it up where it sounded like Matt could have went in for a solo and they deflected from that. And it's, mm. I was, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for Matt to kind of go out on his own and do something. Cause there was a moment where you thought he was and, uh, they didn't do it, but it's okay. It, it's kind of rare now that we're covering all these shows. It's kind of rare that we do see Matt, uh, take a spotlight on that, but it would be cool. It would be very cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this even flow here though, man, it feels, it's, it feels like it's too early because of how lopsided the whole beginning of the set was. And when even flow hits here, you're like, they're like three songs in, right? Oh no, this is exactly where it, they usually play it. But then it's again, be, it's because the whole beginning of the set became kind of forgettable. And even flow is like, where did this come from? And what time is it? it again, it's, it's kind of almost... Um, if you're there and you're saying, okay, we got three that were kind of, you know, slower paced or, or mid tempo paced, uh, I would be glad to have even flow here. Cause Oh, Oh yeah. From absolutely. At, 100%. yeah absolutely. I want to get that, that excitement back from, from, from animal that we didn't have for the mm-hmm. last three songs. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's a perfect spot for just, I don't think it's a perfect spot for construction. I think it's a perfect spot for how they did lay it out yeah yeah you know what i'm saying what, yeah what i mean is when i was listening to it when even flow hit it felt like i had been listening to the bootleg for maybe five and a half minutes because i just yeah glazed over the entire beginning because it was such a weird construction that makes sense that makes sense it's not again song sounded fine uh yes, for the most yes. part but uh yeah it's just little little things good good that we're talking about them though there's mm-hmm. there's never going to be a perfect show but well there might, well, there might there might be that's that's part of why we do this we're out to find the perfect show <laughs> I th- I, yeah once we do we, we're just going to say all right that's it, it. We're, we're done we're, we're done <laughs> <laughs> we, the, the most perfect show that we've we've gotten has been atlanta so uh yeah that's pretty that was damn near perfect way back in october and november um so ed after the song says there's irish blood on that guitar it's mike mccready and they go right into unthought known which i would like to play here because uh like we said we haven't done a lot of backspacer or even current stuff in a long time so uh it's just good to get a good uh beloved live song in there and uh i'm sure you're gonna want to hear it so let's play it yeah yeah See? Yeah, this is living. Look for love in evidence that you're worth keeping. Swallow whole in negatives. It's so sad and sickening. Feel the air up above. Oh, I'm full of blue sky. Feel the air. Oh, black is starting 
So uh, everything about this performance was excellent from uh, the placement after even flow. Uh, it was a great pace. The energy, I think the energy after even flow maintained. Uh, in this instance where you had those three, the Fixer, Tremor Christ, Low Light, um, in most instances, if you have something else going into even flow that's a little punchier then maybe after even flow you kind of want an in my tree a given a fly uh something else um but i liked how they kind of kept the energy there with unthought known i think that was that was it's one of my favorite parts about the show to be honest with you mm -hmm. yeah I, I liked it it was i thought eddie at some point or or at a few points during the song got a little screamy but i chalk it up to passion it, well, it was good in a way. It, it was more, it was more riding the momentum out of, out of even flow. So this is really the time that this song is starting to settle. It, it was starting to settle, but that's the cool thing about this song because it it sounds, feels, and the crowd reacts to it like it settled six years before it had even come out. Like it, it feels right. like this song. This song always feels like it's been around forever. I don't know what it is about it because. It's kind of like the same thing with Amongst the Waves for me. It's it's a little it's a little run of the mill, but for some reason I like them both and they both feel like they've been around for a long time. I've like this double-edged sword relationship with both of those songs. And uh, this was a really good one, so I'm 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 all about it. Well, they're both kind of pop songs when you think yeah, about yeah, it. More they're, than they're, it, they're not terribly interesting, but I I still love them. But you know what? Simple sometimes is good and Pearl Jam has I, I think Backspacer was probably their simplest album uh in terms of sound. Um but this you're right, this is a simple it's a simplistic song, it's a happy song, it doesn't have a lot of moving parts, it doesn't have a lot of things to overthink. Um yeah. you know, the lines in there, you can say the lines and and they are what they mean. You know, right. Um, right. it's not much different than feel the sky blanket you with with gems and rhinestones. That's there's no hidden meaning behind that. Just it's enjoyable, fun lyrics. Uh, you know, dream the dreams of others. Then you, you, will, you will be no one's rival. Like those are just really nice, friendly lyrics. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people attach themselves to it. Mm hmm. You know, it's it's my fiance's favorite song. So yeah. uh, it's 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 great that we kind of agree that it just it settled at this time and it was it was appreciated uh, differently than other backspacer songs. You're not going to get Johnny Guitar something right. like that, and to everybody be like, "Oh, Johnny Guitar! Wow, that." That should never leave a set list. That should be a staple. No, it's unthought known, and uh, amongst the waves are really the two from that album that that really stick out in that that fashion. Right. Um. All right. Rare stuff. You ready? This is a rare one here. Yeah. Real rare one, and only being played because it was a request uh, from the night before. He said, right? Yeah. So. <sighs> <laughs> I I have so much to say about this song, but of course it's it's a live on four legs debut because they've only played it twelve fucking times in their history. No way. You just said it. You just said it. You just said it. You took Get the words it. right. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> you with the dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> that's but um that's PJ twenty when they did it. PJ twenty and Ed says, we want to play a song. Stone doesn't want to play it. And when I asked him to play the song, he said, no way.
So if you've uh, been to shows over the years and you were at like the whole 1998 tour and I mean, you could have gone to 200 shows and probably have never seen No Way um, because it is almost never done. And I believe if I can see correctly here, this is the only time they ever did it in Europe. Uh, it's mostly, you know, there was once in Canada and once in Australia, but this was the one and only time so far that they've done this in a European country. Uh, so <sighs> dissecting it here a little bit, um, we'll, we'll, we'll try to figure out why in a second, but I just, let's get into the stats. Um, when the song came out in 1998, we love talking about those Yield songs that just didn't get the love back then. Uh, it was only played three times. Uh, and it was kind of earlier in the tour, so it, all three of those times were right before those MSG shows that happened that year. And then you had to wait 351 shows before hearing it again in 2009 at Key Arena in Seattle. That's insane <laughs> and then they played a little bit in 2009 three other shows uh including one of the spectrum shows uh one other show from that 2010 tour uh from buffalo uh then we have this night and then since then only three other times one of them being pj20 which we mentioned before another one being LA, which I can't remember if that was the LA show that Patrick Warburton built the set for. It might have been. I can't remember. And then the other, the last one, the last time they played it was uh, Milwaukee, which was the full the full album show. Yeah. I just want to preface this by saying I freaking this is one of my favorite songs off the album. I love it. It it it, it just it's bluesy. It's catchy. Um, there's something about the recording that makes this, it gives this an edge, it makes it feel really good, but there's something about it live that I, I fully understand why they don't want to play it. I'm so glad you said there's something about the recording that makes it bluesy and feel that way because 100% that's true. Uh, and totally happy to have it here and happy to debut it to the show because I, I feel like we've been getting lucky with that. The last couple shows we've been able to debut some new stuff on the show that we haven't covered, but it's, it's kind it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's I'm going to chalk it weird. I'm going to chalk it up to just it. It's because they're playing the same thing. They're playing the same riff over and over and over again. I think it just, I don't know if it's one of those things where it's a mental thing and, you know, mental memory playing it and, and you just get a little sloppy, you get a little bored with it. Mm -hmm. But man, this song has two parts and that's it. Maybe, yeah, that, maybe three. That didn't really bother me as much. I, it was more of the live translation. Something, it was like a sound thing. I mean, I can't say I didn't enjoy it though a little bit because it was nice to hear. So and it was I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to enjoy it automatically just for those reasons. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, like that. that I'm trying, in this instance, I am trying to figure out in their heads, especially Stone, if Stone, you know, was very adamant that he didn't want to play it at, at PJ20, yeah. why they, they don't want to bring this back more often and why it took them uh, 11 years for the album that this debuted on to return in a live setting again. That's... That's what I'm trying to figure out here, and and I wonder if that's because of the repetition and because it just gets a little boring to play, and yeah. because it gets boring to play, everybody kind of uh, trails off a little bit. Yeah, it, it stood out a little bit more as a album song rather than a live song, but but if they wanted to play it at a show I was at, I, I wouldn't complain about it. I would never complain. I would never complain about the song. Um, I think. I don't remember it from this version, but there was, I'm, I'm sure I'm going back to the PJ20 version, uh, where they did the whole first part, because it's kind of, the first verse is really kind of just two verses. Yeah. Um, but that whole first part, they didn't bring any percussion in. Matt didn't come in until 
that second part, and it sound that sounded empty and weird. Mm-hmm. I don't think they did that this time, so that's fine. But I don't know. Um, I like hearing it because it's again rare as shit. So I'm not going to to piss all over the ashes here much more. Um, the one thing I do want to get at is is when you have a song on an album and that doesn't have a sting. I, I'm sure all of you know what a sting is. Uh, when the album finishes on a note instead of fades. Um, this one fades. This one it kind of keeps going and, and it really has no end. Wishlist is the same way. I think a lot of uh, the songs off this album were done in that fashion that didn't have... A sting ender, uh, which kind of live is kind of cool because instead of the the way that they would finish it on the album, they uh, they would just kind of trail. I'm not trying to make a difference, no way, and they would trail that out. But instead, they go back into the that bridge, uh, calling an angel part, um, and then and then they abruptly stop. The abrupt stop is the only thing I don't like about it that I thought was a little weird, but I like that they went back to that that uh, that part in the song, and that's how they ended it. We got to figure out something to do with it. Would love to hear it again if they ever do it again. Uh, we shall see. Maybe there's another yield uh, full album show in the future, but. Uh, you never know. This, this band can pull out some random shit on you sometimes. I didn't really expect to hear Out of My Mind in 2018. so <laughs> uh, Or Evil Little Goat. But but they did. They did both of them. Um, middle here, Ed says, we got a lot of common. Uh, and I think he means uh, Northern Ireland and Seattle. Uh, they share weather. There's a lot of green in both places. Uh, and he says, you gave us Michael Flatley, and we gave you the Iraq War. And nobody really responds. And he's like, that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. At, at least Michael Flatley went away. <laughs> the only thing I really know about Michael Flatley, I know he's like Lord of the Dance or whatever it was, but I remember the celebrity <laughs> death match between him and, well... I remember he was on Celebrity Deathmatch. I don't remember who he faced on Celebrity Deathmatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, River Dance, man. Lord of the Dance. Yeah. Was, yeah. What was Lord his other flies. one? Like uh, all the same. Fire. Fi- um. Hold on, give me like, dude, it's on the tip of my tongue. Fire feet? No, that wasn't it. That's stupid. <laughs> Bla- feet, was, <laughs> was he in Happy Feet? feet of- Feet, feet of flames, I think was. Oh, uh, yeah, that one. Fire, I said fire feet. Feet Seen of that. flames, I think is what it was. It was his, like is another. Uh, I don't know why I know that. <laughs> All right, uh, is he I'm like? A, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> now, did he really go away, or is he still like dancing and stuff? Is he alive he's a, still? He's he's alive. Yeah, he's definitely alive. I don't know. I don't know if he uh, retired yet or not. Uh, I'm sure he's living in a mansion somewhere. Oh yeah, that guy's got plenty of money. Life. Yeah, but um, he d- he did go away from the public spotlight, uh, <laughs> and that brings us into insignificance. Which I wonder, did he say that because Michael Flatley is insignificant? I don't know. Um, this one was this one was fun. Um, it's it's kind of it feels kind of tough to place something after no way because you're not used to how no way kind of fits in sets so this does its job i, th- I, th- I think this this was a a good follow-up um mike and stone were dancing together during this yeah i i was gonna say yeah they they have good stage presence and the crowd's loving this i actually think insignificance was a really good way to go i i really like this it's uh it's really Near the end, uh, there's lots of crowd participation. There's yeah, lots of movement. Yeah. There's lots of pushing. They're they're into this. This this was a good one from this night. Um, and it has, I don't from the YouTube version. There's an immediate transition 
into the next song, but I don't yeah. know if it was cut a little differently, cut a little tight. I, uh, you know what? I don't remember because there are a few uh, really great transitions. There's a few where they fade out and fade back in to cut out some dead time, but I think this is one where they went right into the next one, and it it was if that's the case, it was really good. It was a very good transition. It sounded Absolutely. awesome. So it transitions into present tense. Um, I don't have a lot of notes on it because I really just sat back and enjoyed it. Yeah, another one where the crowd is really coming through. And I, I, I'm sorry, I don't think we've really touched on that enough, just how much the, the crowd is loving this night yeah, so far. Yeah, we should, we should definitely um, bring that up more often. That The crowd was fantastic. It, yeah. Again, um, I don't think we said this before, but it's like they never been to Belfast. No way. <laughs> Insignificant, sir. Uh, yeah, you, I got. You get those fire feet out of here. Feet of flames, whatever they're called. I don't know. All right, now back to the present tense. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I like this performance. Uh, yeah, I like most most performance of present tense, and they, it worked. It was it was a good spot in the set for it, especially. Um, I actually really liked uh, daughter following up on it. Uh, kind of lightheartedly gets the crowd back back into it after mm-hmm. sort of uh, a song that that has two. It's it's kind of two faced a little bit. Where it has like it's the tale of two songs where it starts off very, it's kind of like March mm-hmm. in like a lamb out like a lion, or is it the is that the other way? <laughs> I'm not I sure. Care. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this daughter it was pretty heavy and it was nice and full, which is how I like daughter. I like it to be really when they make it really punchy. Uh, that's where it really stands out for me because it doesn't have to be this drag of a song. It doesn't have to be toned down or tamed. You know, daughter could be really upbeat and really punchy. And this was one of them. Yep. Um, and there's a little tag. It's a, a real me tag, uh, but it's not really a real me. tag. I, I, I mean, it is, but he's just kind of saying, can you see the real me? Can you see the real me? Can you see the real me? And he's saying it over and over again. Um, yeah. I didn't care. I didn't care for that. It just it stuff like that makes me want to get rid of the tags on this song. So and just just jam it if, if yeah, because because they were in a pretty good jam. I thought they they had a good vibe going. The crowd was digging it at this point. But what I did like, and I'm sorry, I got I got a little confused. We were talking about the present tense daughter transition or the insignificance present tense, uh, which which was good, but. Uh, I'm sorry, what I was thinking of was the daughter got some transition because uh, he was doing that real me tag and it really faded out and it really was starting to silence into nothing, into nothing, into nothing. And then they hit you with got some like right away. And I thought that worked really well. I, that was one of the high points of the of the set because that transition was, it, it kind of hit you out of nowhere from this high point of, of daughter and this jam to this almost fade out and then right into what was a, a a single for them at the time and i think it i think it hit the crowd pretty hard sure like a ton of bricks like uh that's kind of how i want to be hit when i heard this song every single time it's fine <laughs> we did this for so long and early on that I, I feel like it became that running theme that every time we heard got some i would just scream and cringe uh um if you're still listening from that point, thank you. Uh, and that's probably why we haven't done a lot of backspacer uh, stuff recently. But I, um, if you're a newer listener, I obviously don't like it that much. Uh, but if you're going to play it somewhere, play it middle-ish of the set. That's where it doesn't feel... It feels inconsequential to the rest of the set going on. It can kind of, it can be played, and this is this is just me. This is just me and how I feel about the song. Where it can be played, it could it, they can tear through it. It's about two to three minutes, whatever it is, and it can kind of be forgotten about, and that's okay. Um, but I the the way that. The reason why I do hate this song so much is that I went to at least 
two shows in a row where they played in an encore, and I, I hated it. I hated it in an encore, and I thought it was the worst possible spot for a song like that. So, um, but you just said it's only like two something minutes, so they could fire through it really quick. You might as well just do it. Yeah, I know, but I, I might as well just do something better in an encore. This this should have I, I wouldn't move it because the transition out of daughter was awesome. But if I had to, this should have been where the fixer was. Got some would have been so much better out of animal because it's like you said, it's quick and fast. And, uh, and I actually do think it works well really early. Uh, it, it depends on my mood, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I, I think after if corduroy is like three or four in and then you go into it, it's fine. But if this is like, if got some is three, then at least for me, I sort of, uh, my momentum goes away a little bit, but I mean, it could be different for the band. It could be different for other people. So, um, it kind of does this like little sarcasm voice during the song. Did you, did you realize that you hear sometimes when he does is like, have you heard of diplomatic resolve? Yeah. And like he does this, I don't know how to explain it. I call it a sarcasm voice. It just kind of showing, you know, the theme that we were saying, uh, he's just having a lot of fun. They're not taking it very seriously. It kind of sounds like that on the album, like it's like a like he's like he's talking to you like in a joking way, like it's a joke. Right. Uh, except live, he could dial it up a lot more because he doesn't have to worry about it. You know, he you you could have it sound live in the studio. You want to get it to sound good enough to sell, but <laughs> but live, sure. you just do it. Yeah. You do I it mean, how you want to do it. Right. Well, he has that certain shit on different sort of songs. Uh, I don't know. I guess the one that that's that's pointing out to me right now is when in MFC during you know after the chorus he goes. Nang, 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 nang. Oh just, yeah, you hate that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it sucks. It's, um, it's not great. It's not great. Now if he did something like that and got some, I would just be like, yeah, cool. Just ruin <laughs> the song for me even more. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's move on. Um, now, were you able to see Save You? Uh, you know what? I w- completely, I completely forgot to go back and and look at it and, and see if I could find it. Because, okay, like you... I said, the my Dropbox files were not working until you just resent them to me. So, I I, just, I completely forgot. All right, so I'm sure maybe... it's fine. <laughs> um, it's not. <laughs> Really? They Oof. they drop they drop this down like a step or three. Oh, geez. why don't we? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play it for you guys, but also during that time where we play it, Matt is gonna listen to it real quick. Yes, I am. And then we're gonna talk about it because yeah, they, they um the YouTube version of this they completely skip save you, uh, which is I guess there's a reason for it. Are you saying it's probably for the best? I'll, I'll, I'll let you form your own opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know how okay. I feel about this song. I, I love this song and I love, I love it for the way it sounds and it should not sound like it did. So um, <laughs> you guys can make up your own mind. I think it's, it's worth it to discuss, play it, figure it out. Uh, so here it is. And I'm going to play it right now. Hold on. Let me listen. Oh no. <laughs> right? Oh no, no, no. I'm gonna save you for good. I'm not gonna lose you. I'm getting cocky and strong. I heard your reaction. Uh, <laughs> let everybody else know what you thought. From from what I just listened to, really quick, since I got the I got the MP3s now, 
is that it sounds like it was performed really well and tight and fast and fun and and uh and they definitely changed the key and I wonder No sir, I don't like it. Yeah. I I wonder if this was part of Ed saying beforehand, hey, I might not have my voice tonight, but I really want to play Save You. If we tune it down a little bit, I'll be able to catch up with it. So let's do it that way. Possibly. And I will say I don't dislike it as much as I dislike it when they detune, uh, do the evolution. I think that still is... That that's too obvious and it's too much and I, I it it really changes how the song feels and sounds. This one is I'll say forgivable and passable, but it's it's also pretty obvious and I'm I'm not crazy about it. You know what band it sounds like? It s- sounds like Alkaline Trio. <laughs> okay, it's it just okay. they every one of their songs is played in that key and. <laughs> If you've heard one of their songs before, I I don't hate the band that much. I don't hate the band at all. I I used to like them. It's just, it's in that key. Right. Every single one of their songs, because it's meant to sound a little dark. Like Guns N' Roses and Metallica and the entire Weezer Blue album. It's all like the same. Right, but Guns N' Roses and Metallica at least have energy. This, this... Even even though Save You has energy, obviously, it's a punk song, it just down-tuned made it sound depressing. Uh, yeah, no, it doesn't make it sound any heavier or more rock. Actually, what would make it sound more rock and heavier is if it was in its original key and Eddie was screaming along to it. That's what sure. would give it its feel. So right. actually, they kind of went the the opposite way with it. You don't always have... Kids, you don't always have to drop songs down, keys... Or, or drop tuning on your guitar to sound heavy. Like, it's a it's a myth. <laughs> in my in my head, listening to this version of Save You, I'm envisioning Eddie wearing black gloves, uh, black eyeliner, and like a streak of pink in his hair. <laughs> I I was envisioning him like <laughs> like out planting <laughs> flowers or something because it kind of dulls it down. I was like, oh, this is kind of dull. Well. Uh, like, I'm, is, I'm, like he's just kind of oh I'm gonna go mow the mow the lawn and sing save you to myself but uh, half step down and because it's sort of dull that way we're on two different spectrums here but all but, right but, but, but we could we could agree it's not serving the purpose that it's supposed to it's serving it's different purposes. absolutely not I mean this <laughs> this one this one is a no brainer if you play it right it's it's a home run it's a home run with the crowd. Uh, the crowd seemed into it, and it's fine, but like you know, to a a trained ear and an ear that wants this song, uh, the way that they know how to hear it, uh, I would have been a little disappointed to hear it this way. So, I think the band sounds really great, though. I mean, I could give them the benefit of the doubt on that. I don't, I don't yeah. think it was played poorly. I think it was like this whole show; everything's played really well. It's just little. Little things, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, all right. That was a lot of time on that, but I think uh, good <laughs> well, you discussion. Gotta, you gotta, yeah, you got to talk about stuff like that. Yeah. I, honestly, before I even got the MB3s, I didn't even I, – I just was kind of like skip it because we couldn't really talk about it, but <laughs> it really deserved time in the show. Um, Given a Fly's next. We're getting close to the end of the set here. Uh, there are three songs left. Um, and to start this little section is given a fly. And I know we've talked about given a fly before and I've sort of, you know, I've, I've come down on it and I've sort of accepted it for what it is, but this was egregiously fast in the beginning. I didn't care for this one at all. I thought this was where Eddie was really winded and he was dropping lines left and right. And I was going to say like I did previously that I could chalk that up to him being tired because it wasn't really ruining the song and it wasn't, it wasn't affecting me negatively, but the whole thing I didn't really care for on this one. It, to me, it was the speed. Um, and, and I've, I've come down on that a lot because we've heard, obviously heard versions that are faster than the album version. And, uh, I've been okay with those, but this one was just, Mike was basically in fast forward mode. 
Yeah. It was off. I, I didn't care for it either. John will send some hate mail to us, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but it's, we... it's true. It's true. This this was bad pacing, and, and Eddie was skipping a lot of it. A lot of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long the song is on the album off the top of my head, but this was about three minutes tops, this whole performance. Mm. I checked an email while listening to this, and by the time I was done looking at that email, not responding looking at that email <laughs> i had to listen to the song again because the song was over <laughs> we spent more time talking about it than we did listening to it so it happens sometimes but yeah you know that's that's why this is a three-hour show folks thanks <laughs> thanks for hanging in with us by the way we don't we don't thank you guys enough for that factor we thank you for listening but we don't thank you for listening to two to three hours, however long it could be a week, because uh, we go back and listen to it, too, just to, you know, see if we sound good. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's... I can see this getting to be a, a, a grind on people. Uh, I'm hoping that people are doing summer road trips, and, you know, they're driving eight hours to a beach front or something like that, and they just put this on and, and listen to it. It'll, it'll get you through a good car ride, I will say that. Um, but anyway, moving on, uh, black is going to be the penultimate to end to this, this first set. Um, I like this version of black a lot. Um, I like it cause it's upbeat and it's very percussion heavy. Um, and I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago when we discussed the whole idea of it with Steve and how he said he likes his he likes his coffee black, uh, so to speak. He likes yeah. his black to be emotional. He likes his black, bl- as black as possible. Right, and <laughs> I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of like some, some happy, happier versions of this song. And this was a song I felt like the crowd was engaged with it. The doo doo doos were were in full force near the end, and um, and it just makes the version so much more fun than the subject matter and i i like that they can do that that that's an ability that they have yeah and that that was kind of my whole point where you go see black and and it could be transformed into this into this group thing and it, before you know it it's it's a high point of the night and it's positive and and you feel good and you're singing along with everybody and you you know, you just see the song in a whole different light. And that that's exactly what I was trying to say when Steve was on the show. But I have to go back now. I have to agree with Steve. I hated this version. Did you really? I listened to it like four times. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. If it wasn't for the crowd singing along louder than the band in some points, there is zero emotional attachment to any point of this performance of the song. This seemed like it was well, just that in another... A way- if, this, it, I, I feel like the whole point of the song was was missed, and they just. They but just I think play, that's okay. Like we were just saying before, it's it's okay. It, it just yeah, it, it well, turned into exa- a sing along, exa- and that that's fine. Exactly, ex- ex- exactly. That was my point going back going back to that episode. But I have to backtrack now, and I have to agree with Steve because hearing it this way, I I I completely disagree with myself because <laughs> there was there was no emotion or any any type of connecting to this version it was like a it's like a poppy rock song and and i i need it blacker but the crowd on it saved it i mean if 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 anything made me feel connected to this version at all it was the crowd because they they filled the arena uh, on this song yeah i i mean i would say that most times you hear the song that that's gonna happen but this was a an especially good crowd for it you know, I, I I like I like this in all different flavor flavors. It it's just, just what you, whatever you're in the mood for. And and I listening to the song uh, when I did, I wasn't overly uh, in like an emotional state. I was just kind of like just enjoying music and 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 I like the up, upbeat uh, point of it. I I was totally fine with it. I didn't care about. I didn't want to think about like an emotional moment in my life by hearing it live and, and think about, Oh, a family member that was lost or, or something along those lines. I, I for this one, I just wanted to, to sing along and be fine with it. 
you know what it felt like? It felt like they were playing it in a specific way to make it work better in this part of the set. And I didn't like that. Yeah, because... But I, I think the... I actually, I'm going to counterpoint that because I think that um, when they do play it emotionally in this point of the set and then they go into something like Rear of Mirror, which we'll talk about in a second, um, I think that th- that point you get all different range of emotions and you can really go from like, you know, feeling all those feelings that I was talking about before that this version doesn't have, which is, is okay. Some, some black have cream and sugar. Some are (laughs) just black, black, uh, emo black. This is, this is, this is the Dunkin' Donuts light and sweet. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, it might be like hazelnut. With a blueberry muffin on the side. (laughs) (laughs) Hazelnut. (laughs) This is this is this is your grandma's black. Uh, I know what I'm getting for breakfast tomorrow. Um, but yeah, like in a really an emotional version of the song, going into a very gritty, grinding, hard version of of rearview mirror, and and it ties everything together. Um, okay, so we're ending the set here with rearview mirror. Uh, Ed beforehand says it's time for you guys to start running around in a circle real fast, and. Boy, does this version, um, I mean, even if he didn't tell people to do that, um, he would have conveyed it with, with this. This is, um, my buzzword for this song is buzz saw. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, cause it speeds up in that bridge part. It's a buzz saw, man. And they do a lot of cool, different, different variations on the on the progression and the bridge which we've been seeing a lot lately and mm-hmm. it's really cool they go to a lot of different places in this one i want to hear some of that i think we i think we should play yeah there's some of this bridge I, it's, it's gonna just be fantastic it's gonna be tough really it's gonna be tough uh filtering through where though i mean there's there are some i gotta listen to it again and get your your find, find, a, re- find a really good spot get the fastest yeah because there's there's some there's some really great spots here I think so. I, I kind of blacked out when I was editing. <laughs> if I miss something, let me know. I, I just Where am I, I? I hope uh, past past me hopes that you put the song in, and uh, future me has it. Listening to it right now, uh, this was a fantastic way to end a first set with a lot of energy and uh, a lot of good singing and um, some weird choices, but. Uh, I really won't dock a lot of points for their weird choices. Uh, overall, pretty good. So we're about to dive into a very interesting encore here. Uh, this is where Ed talks about the jet lag, and he says it's nice to come to the other side of the world where people agree on something. Not sure how this one came. It came about a year ago, uh, and he's talking about the next song. Um, all right. So what happened during the show? Why this, you know, I I wish I would have brought it up beforehand to kind of give a little teaser, but, uh, nope, didn't do that. Just kept saying they haven't played a show in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, there was a wedding at the show, a true live wedding at a Pearl Jam show. I, I, I just, the only thing I don't know is when 
the vows took place. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the logistics of of the ceremony, as you would say. <laughs> I, I would assume that if if it really took place during in the middle of the show, it would have been during the encore, like right uh, during the break. And I wonder if I wonder if they went over plans with Eddie beforehand, like, hey, this is this is happening. Um, and really to fo- follow that, Just Breathe is pretty much the most perfect song to uh, to have at your wedding, first of all, because I, I know because that will be happening. Um, but and, and I've, I've done it a few times. So, yeah, it's it, it, it's effective. So I, I wonder if he's just trying to set the move, the mood up for uh, what he'll he'll do with the next one. Um, so I, I yeah, I, I wonder I wonder if at this point this is like them walking down the aisle and you know the throwing the rice and everything like that. I wonder if that's this moment, which was a really nice moment. It was a really good version of this song. Yeah. All right, so. Before the next song, Ed, um, I'll just kind of read what I what I what I wrote here because it's pretty much exactly what he said. Uh, he addresses an industrious member of the audience of the male persuasion who had the wisdom and tenacity to have the guts and courage to get married today, but to have his whole crew here tonight so he can say that we played his wedding. All of those words. Yeah. are fantastic every single one of them they they're so eloquent what do you think about it it's like yeah pearl jam was my wedding band <laughs> exactly i mean uh, i mean hey guys listen in the band i got i got one going on september 21st if you guys are not doing anything not torn <laughs> for any albums like we talked before uh willing to do a free show we hired a band and they're they're really good but um we can, we can kick him out. It's all right. <laughs> Especially if Stone walks in. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> it, how funny would it be? It, it would, this, this is reminding me of, uh, of a Simpsons moment here where Homer really wants to, to own the Dallas Cowboys, but he, um, uh, Long story short, he he gets to own the Denver Broncos, and the Denver Broncos are on his front lawn. And I wonder if it's like I really wish that you know Eddie and Stone can be at my wedding. And then it's like, well, we didn't get Eddie and Stone, but Boom's here. I would still be really happy, but I'd be like, oh, Boom. <laughs> no, nah, I would. I no the Denver the Denver Broncos line in that Simpsons episode is a freaking classic, uh, but. It's not. No, I would not have the same reaction to Boom. It, was, it, was, <laughs> it would just be funny if you were expecting Eddie Stone, Mike, and then it's like Boom, and nobody knows who he is. Or uh, D- Dave A shows up. Dave A showing up would be kind of cool. He probably would. <laughs> is he doing anything else? I don't know. We know people that have his number, so <laughs> they were talking to him on Christmas. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know how how that story went but uh, uh all right more on this because this is this is the real story so he said he can says congratulations to the lovely couple uh live as long as you do if not longer and the next song we'd like to play for your first dance so clear a little space for them it's dedicated to the bride and groom colin and ashlyn carty and yes i did try and get in touch with colin uh no he did not get back to me so uh that's where all that ended i i i I, you know i and i said this to kind of end last week's show i didn't i I felt really weird getting in touch because what if you know there's a big what if there's a 50 50 chance that they're still together or sadly they could be divorced uh, but I tried to phrase it in a way that how could anybody be divorced uh, after getting married at a Pearl Jam show? Well, uh, there's lots of ways. Uh, I'm sure he's also been asked about this a million times, and maybe he's just tired of talking yeah, about it. Although, 
hey, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of people asking you questions about it. So you yeah. gotta open yourself up for that. But honestly, if somebody was asking me about my wedding at a Pearl Jam show, I'd be like, ah, oh, sit down. Let's let's grab a beer. Let's let's have a conversation. I, I would I would I would be all over it. But, you know, not everybody is as uh, as talkative and, and egotistical as I am. So. Um, but anyway, if if Colin and Ashlyn are listening to this and they are still happily wed, which I really hope they are, um, this was their first dance song. And maybe you can, you know, get up in the room that you're in or if you're listening to the car, park on the side and then uh, and have a second first dance because we're going to play amongst the waves. What used to be your house of cards has turned into a reservoir. Save the tears, they were waterfalling. Let's go swim tonight, darling. Once outside the undertow, just you and me and nothing more. If not for love, I would be drowning. I've seen it work both ways, but we are far. be my favorite version of this song um it's just ed seems like he's pouring everything into it uh it seems like he really wants to to this to be a memorable moment for the newlyweds and uh the ending is really strong a lot of passion everybody in this band is just is is coming out strong in this one yeah i thought it was a a cool choice because you could go the you could go the way of, of the normal first dance, you know, where it would be like just breathe and you could have a nice slow dance with your with your new husband or wife and, and I'm sure that's what they did or, or or they said their vows when that song was playing, who knows uh, what actually went on. But when he says like, Oh, here's your first dance together as a married couple, amongst the waves is a really good choice because it's more of a instead of a slow dance, it's like a it's like a let's all celebrate type dance because sure. it really opens up and it really gets really catchy and you could sing up to the rafters of the of the venue uh, and I thought it was yeah I thought that was really cool I thought I thought it had such a good feel and it was performed really well and I really hope it made everyone feel as good as he in, intended them to feel with that song because I, even I even I when I was listening to it I was like this is just a good really happy positive performance i i think just thinking about it and just the the phrase in the chorus just singing riding high above the waves amongst the waves i'm sorry cut that out uh what's the name of the song <laughs> uh, <laughs> um what was what was what we called another song earlier i can't remember <laughs> trevor christ this is trevor oh, trevor. Trevor, trevor christ, christ. <laughs> um uh, riding high amongst the waves um it feels like sort of you're painting this picture of like they're on top of the world right now that this is the no moment in their life outside of having a child is going to get better than this these three minutes that the song is playing right now that they are at, you know this could be the biggest wave that eddie has ever uh road in his life and they can just be on top of it just in enjoying it as it comes up and it goes down it comes up and it goes down and they're you know they're not being taken by the tide again if colin and ashlyn are listening in uh, i hope you're uh i hope it's been a successful marriage and i uh, hope to hear from you guys so uh we move on to state of love and trust and we're back to some energy uh, after two really sweet, um, emotional ones. 
Uh, it's a powerful version. The band is into it. Matt's uh, setting the pace extremely high, and that is it. That's what I got. I liked it. Yeah, it's super tight, and I, I, I really like the placement of it here. How do you come out of something so kind of meaningful and memorable for uh, a, a new bride and groom? And I think the way to do that is with State of Love and Trust, and and it's played really well. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that most times that you hear State of Love and Trust, it's it's going to be fantastic. I, I, it's one of those songs where um, I hear it live, and I immediately. I have my own dance for it. It's uh, I I jump up and down in one spot, and <laughs> yeah, but like like char- like Charlie Brown, maybe I, I I'm not getting that picture in my <laughs> head. It's it's imagine me on a pogo stick, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like that, and, and I do it sort of. Um, I don't realize that I'm doing it, so it's just once the song hits, I, I immediately, and it goes into, you know, after that little intro and it really gets into the heavy part, I, I start jumping, 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 jumping. Uh, and I don't know. That's, that's just makes me happy to hear the song. So, uh, all right. After this, uh, Ed's going to get into a little personal love story. Uh, 10 years ago to that date, uh, he had met a girl with the last name McCormick, an Irish woman. Uh, we met 10 years ago and have, we've meet, been meeting ever since. Had two kids and it's as happily ever after as it could be. Uh, at some point, McCormick's a good name, but I'll have to change it. I'm missing all them bad right now. I want, So were they not married at that point? It says, it says married 2010, so it had to have been shortly after that. Oh, okay. Like immediately after that. Yeah. They were still on tour for a little while after this, so man, he he wrote all those songs on Backspacer, the those you know love songs, and you know I specifically talk about Just Breathe and and the end, which is very much a uh, you know a family song, so to speak. Uh, okay, so I, I just I just had it. to look it up for our own sanity. They got engaged in two thousand. Nine and they were married on September eighteenth, two thousand ten. Ah, oh, ten days. Ah, oh, oh, but three days. Ah, uh, is is that egotistical that I thought my birthday first, and then I thought my <laughs> wedding day? Is oh, that bad? How it's sandwiched right <laughs> right in between. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, man, can we get married on a Wednesday? Is eighteenth a Wednesday this year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might have to change. We might have to get married on a Wednesday, so we can have the same date. That's really creepy. All right, we're not doing that. Um, good, good for them. They've been married ever since, and they are very, very lovely couple. I just when uh, when Jill came uh, to the show, one of the shows with the the um, the jacket, uh, the Mel- the jacket that was supposed to mock Melania. Oh yeah, that was great. That oh my, you just you can just tell how how awesome she is. Uh, wasted reprise into Better Man. Really, not much to say about wasted reprise because it is the relief pictures of. It's not just the relief pictures of, so, of songs. It's it, it's not like the eighth inning guy that can pitch a couple. It's it's the one. It, it's like the left handed specialist. He's out to pitch to one batter, and then. He can pitch one pitch. It could be a ground ball out, and uh, and he gets sent back for 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 the righty. It's it's a left-handed specialist. That's all it is. After the lefty comes in, uh, manager comes out and you know brings in the closer. Uh, better man is kind of like uh, Mariano Rivera or I don't know who are some other big name closers. I don't even know closers in the game nowadays. Uh, good one like Craig Kimbrell um closers used to be awesome and now they're not anymore I feel like they're all expendable that's another conversation now they're just stress inducing yeah uh Edwin Diaz is supposedly really good we'll 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 see see. we'll see we'll see in a few weeks um but yeah uh they bring out the closer and it's good singing from the crowd 
Um, once they break into the faster part of the verse, the crowd gets into this jumping frenzy, and uh, it's just it's a fast version, and and people are really into it. And I I almost wonder if they they're speeding this up due to time, and they think that there are some time restraints at the end. But um, uh, tag only lasted about three minutes, and it, it, that feels like it's way less than usual. And singing the actual lyrics to save it for later. Yeah, I thought this was a really good tag, but I, yeah, I don't know if they were trying to save time because it's not like they do a short encore too by any means. And no, but they have I, to get something big in. Yeah, I think they were just really feeling the the crowd reaction to this song, and that, that's how I read it. Uh, it. It did feel a little shorter, but it, it wasn't really short. So I, I think they were just going with the crowd's momentum and and the energy that the crowd was giving them. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I mean, I hey, they could they they could have been rushing through it to get to the encore too, but uh, we'll talk about that when it pops up. Yeah. At any rate, uh, it sounded good. I was I was happy with it here. It's a, a very better man type spot. Um, all right, we have a birthday to get to. We had a wedding and a birthday on the same day. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, technically, it's not. Well, technically, really... a few days, but you got to you got to take advantage of this moment here, right? Um, all you right, you can't let that go. So Ed asked for a favor from the crowd, and he mentioned it is the legendary Brendan O'Brien's uh, birthday. Um, Brendan O'Brien has one of the best track records when it comes to producing albums in the world. I think most of you know that because he did most of Pearl Jam, so don't have to beat a dead horse there. Uh, he was turning 50 in a few days. That means he's almost 60. Yeah. He's like a year away from being 60. Wow. Uh, so Ed wants to send him a birthday message from the crowd. Uh, they put up... I don't know why they did it like this. I guess to... Uh, make it so they could kind of hide the noise from the crowd, but they put up a curtain in front of them. It was so on the video he couldn't see the crowd because they videotaped it. Oh, that was the... Oh, it was... Vi- oh, okay. I guess I didn't realize. I thought they were just on speakerphone. Yeah, he says he, it, they wanted to make it look like... um like they were either backstage or in a room somewhere, then they dropped the curtain and then everyone's got the lighters up. Did they even have FaceTime back in 2010? I, I don't think it was a live video. I think they were just filming the video there. Oh, and they were going to send okay. it to them. I, that I wasn't clear on. but uh, Okay. I, oh, yeah, I don't know if they did live streaming back in 2010. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it came a little later. I feel like 2000, <laughs> I feel like 2010 or 2009 was the year that I got the iPhone and uh, couldn't really do too much with it. He did a, <laughs> yeah. a lot, but I remember downloading like three apps would, you know, that would be as much gigs as, as your phone can handle. And and one would be like the classic drum machine app that everyone had. It was like the, <laughs> the, the most popular app when you first get your first iPhone. Or waste drums. paper, waste paper basket tossing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Doodle jump. Those Was things. that like... Was that like the stick man swing thing? Like a, yeah, you, I think you like so. Like fly around like Spider Man, uh, but you're a stick man or something. That was a good yeah, one. yeah. We've come a long way since the days of of Snake on, uh, uh, you know, the green screens. Snake um, on your on your Motorola Razor. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> e, you kids out there listening, and I know that there are kids like that are 20 years old that listen to this show. And they probably have no idea what a motor roller razor is. <laughs> so, getting on that Google machine, find them phones. Uh, all right, yeah, Ed makes some sort of shower joke when he puts the curtain up. Uh, I wasn't really sure. It, it, I don't know. It was something about seeing Brendan in a shower. Who knows? Um, it, was, it was. It was. He. We're gonna put the curtain up so he thinks we're in a room or. Or we're all getting out of the shower together, like we know. Oh, okay. Something like that. Yeah, that (laughs) makes sense. All right. Uh, Okay, so the entire crowd sings "Happy Birthday" to Brendan O'Brien, and of course, Ed uh, does his best impression of Michael Scott. We've (laughs) talked about it before. Um, We just we don't need to relive it. It's fine. (laughs) Happy birthday, buddy! Happy birthday, Brendan O'Brien, in June. While we're at St. Patrick's Day, he's got a couple months. 
Uh, all right, we go from happy birthday to Jeremy. Uh, that heavy bass in the beginning, loud, fast, punchy, good, fun version. It's finally mixed well, and that you could hear the bass uh, on this Jeremy. Finally, it's been a couple of weeks since uh, since I've been able to get hit in the chest with with some nice twelve string bass because it's been so just not there. But this was present and sounded good. I liked it. This did sound awesome. Uh, yeah. A lot of these songs have been at uh, quicker speeds at this night. I believe I've might have mentioned that a little bit uh but this jeremy feels like one where the whole crowd is jumping in unison for uh because it's that it's that type of version all right uh encore leash uh every time we hear it it feels like it's been a while uh we usually seem to hear it in an encore spot like this it's a pretty prominent position for this kind of song that has this history of uh this you know they went years and years and years without playing it and uh you know everybody with their signs play leash you pussies and all that and it is turned into whenever they do play it it is very prominently placed um do you want to play leash or do you not want to play leash i'll leave it up to you um yeah yeah i do because i i kind of want to hear it again because i this one was just okay to me, but I wasn't blown away by it. But uh, I'd like to hear it again. Maybe, maybe I, I can have my mind changed, or, or maybe people might agree with me. Maybe it wasn't the best version of it, but yeah, my, we might as well. Why not? All right, drop the leash. <laughs> thought that people weren't going to necessarily agree with you but that's kind of i guess what i thought i uh, um you know like i've said most of these songs have been faster versions uh but this didn't feel faster it felt rushed uh and it just comes off sloppy yeah maybe maybe sloppy is the right word I, I when I heard it, I was maybe considering that it was encore two, and they're just running around, they're just playing, they're singing into the microphones, and they're just doing their thing at this point. But I think I think this was something a little different. I think this is a little bit more on the sloppy side than the having a good time side. But it could have been sloppy because they were just having a good time, and it's at the end of the show. So I, I could I could understand that and forgive them for that almost. But I, th- I think we've heard better. Yeah, I I can't really say much more than that. I again another song. I'm not sure how long it lasted on the album, but this was exactly three minutes uh, track on MP3, and it it feels it feels short. Uh, but that's you know always nice to hear least though. Yeah, because it yeah. doesn't really come up when when we do these kind of shows, and I would say. Yeah, I- I, th- I think I'm just going to chalk it up to end of the night looseness. Let's just, let's put it that way. Fair, fair. That's fine. Um, Leash so, gets the benefit of the doubt on this show. 
<laughs> so we're at uh, bread and butter uh, spottage here, um, but it's a little bit different. It's, it's um, I don't know. It's a, little, uh, it's a, little, it's it's a, a big. It's a bagel with cream cheese. It's, a, it's, a, it's some locks in there though. I don't know, man. Alive is in a different spot, and then um, Crazy Mary. Believe it or not, Crazy Mary was the only, and if you want to call it a cover, uh, yes, it, it is in all technicality a cover, but it is widely recognized as Pearl Jam's baby, or not baby, but song. Uh, Crazy Mary was the only one. There was no Baba, there's no Rockin', there's no, uh, I don't know, even in-between songs, uh, like an Arms Aloft, I think they were starting to do a lot back then. Uh, none of that. No is. Baba O'Reilly. Can you believe that? <laughs> I I think this, this show could have used a Baba O'Reilly. Yeah, sure. Um, not saying that I didn't like that it wasn't used, but... Um, yeah, I mean, of course, I'd rather see a whole show of, of Pearl Jam, to be honest. I mean, I love their yeah. covers. Some of their covers, some of their covers are, are fantastic, but if you could be lucky enough to go and see, you know, 30 songs, every song be a Pearl Jam song, that's, that's pretty... I mean, I'd say that's almost kind of rare these days. But One of the last times that they were in Ireland, this might have even been at the Dublin show. I can't remember. Um, they did, uh, and remember how you were saying, they should be doing some like random you know, rock and roll songs that you don't hear them do. I'm just making sure, no, they did not do it in Dublin uh, the night before. Um, and I actually come to think of it arms aloft which i just mentioned debuted the night before oh, okay. in dublin so on point um i don't remember what show it was it was like it was probably a dublin show a couple of years earlier but they did thin lizzy uh uh boys are back in town yeah there you go just bust out a weird classic rock song that you've you've never done before that you could play well i mean of course make sure you play it well but yeah, Mike sounded really good on that version. Yeah, I, I'd love to be surprised by a song, that's some weird classic rock song. Like even that, I mean, it's not one of my favorite songs, but if they played it, I'd be like, "Damn, you know, it's, it's yeah, wild." Kind of how we got tre- Cheap Trick one of those nights. Yeah, yeah, uh, or like dr- you know, Driven to Tears was really cool. Yeah, because St- Sting played it with them, so that was even cooler. But yeah, right. Um, yeah, Crazy Mary is the only cover. Um, this is. A nice ending stretch here. Again, breaks up bread and butter monotony, if you want to call it that. Um, I got nothing extra on Crazy Mary. It's it's, it's not, they're not throwing, um, you know, they're not running the gauntlet with it. It's not like this version where uh, Boom and Mike are back and forth, but it's still a very strong version. It sounds good. Yeah, Boom, Boom is super into it. He looks like he's having a lot of fun, and Stone is... Uh is up there uh, you know jamming with them and you know they're they're running back and forth and it's it is pretty straightforward but i don't know this uh, the same uh, same thing man with this set this it didn't feel right here um it was a quick transition from leash which i thought was a little yeah, weird it was but the one thing i will say is when they go backstage and they kind of if they powwow a little bit they should have changed it to a live Baba Ledbetter because this was a singing crowd. Oh yeah. This wasn't, you know, this wasn't like a jam band crowd. Sometimes you get just people that are just, just listening and and enjoying. Uh, This was a, this was a vocal crowd Um, to hear Baba with this vocal crowd could have been really, really good. I don't think Eddie would have had to, move the microphone up to his mouth once if they did Baba O'Reilly in this no, crowd. No, no, uh, a lie. And he could have, and he could have had the entire song off if he wanted it. Yeah, he had just been throwing tambourines. He would have been fine. But uh, alive here, um, was very much a sing song. It, it yeah. you know, that that that's why. I guess I'm kind of because I liked Crazy Mary, and I'm kind of backtracking a little bit. I know I said that. Baba would have been good, but um, yeah, it, it just would have worked. It's a, it's a, it's a sing song. He said they were. That's what they were there for. We we heard it a lot tonight. Yeah, uh, Ed takes the mic one last time at this show. He says, 
You guys really helped elevate tonight's proceedings. Thank you very much, Northern Ireland. He mentions uh, the opener, who we didn't mention. It was Ben Harper in the Relentless Seven. Oh, you don't say. No way. <laughs> yeah, this, this was the one and only time they ever uh, opened for them. So, you know, maybe maybe they just didn't feel like doing anything with Ben this night. Yeah. Because this would have been the spot right here. <laughs> uh, just just saying. Uh, it says he was still recovering from the flight, you know, more than 24 hours ago. Hope hope you didn't notice, but I hope I did my best. And in Hawaiian, it's not goodbye, it's see you later, and then says something in Hawaiian. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but, yeah, Ben Harper's there, and they're not doing indifference. Womp womp. Yeah, but you know what? This is a lead better show. We talk about that sometimes. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. It's uh, they're singing along to it, and uh, bring him out, bring him out. It's Ben Harper. Bring him out. He's like your best friend. I want, I want, I want to see like mystery cop shows with Eddie and and Ben Harper solving mysteries. Like a what do they call this? Like a, a buddy movie? Is that what they call? Yeah, it? Yeah, like a police academy. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking like a Step Brothers. Yeah. Okay. Here's that. See, see what and, kind of hijinks they could get themselves into. And Boom is the guy that always has the tip. <laughs> I saw a guy. I saw a guy on, on... Boom could be like their, the, the, the police chief. <laughs> He's old and wise, but yep. But uh, he, he won't take any of your crap. I won't take these hijinks here. <laughs> now let me go grow my hair three inches longer and go eat a pineapple. Uh, it, was, it was kind of funny. Uh, at the end of the song, Ed... Uh, points out to a couple. He said, I saw you making out right there. I saw you. Gross. That was pretty funny. Yeah. But, you know, you get emotional in the moment. It's your, if you're from Northern Ireland, you never leave the country. It's going to be your last time to ever see them. So, yeah. might as well go down with the ship. Uh, little U2 tag here. Uh, I'm not a U2 fan, so I have no idea. I don't know the song. I know, <laughs> like, Shamu the Mysterious Whale, which I know it's not that. Not stupid. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vertigo and, you know, Beautiful yeah, Day yeah, and all. Yeah. <laughs> I have good yeah, memories I, of that. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, me too, yeah. I don't know this. Yeah, I didn't know it either. I'm, I'm not at all a U2 fan. The the crowd knew it. Uh, the song is I Will Follow. Um, yeah, I'm just not a U2 fan. I just never really got on the train so um i think that south park episode with bono really kind of spoke to me that might have been it i think it spoke to a lot of people Mm Hmm. yep it's the number two uh all right i think we've come all this way so we need to give it a little number on this Uh, i was like not looking forward to this part yeah i mean everything is played really well and the band performs everything really well uh and i feel like i was giving a lot of eights lately and i was actively looking for a reason not to give this an eight and i'm like okay i think i found a good reason and it's it's set placement i i don't really like the flow of this show at all even though i like most of the songs played you get you get a cool no way here which was not even that cool it was just kind of weird but it was cool to see and I'm like, uh, and then I was thinking, eh, maybe, maybe even a seven is too high. And but because it was, it's just, it's a kind of a weird show. But uh, I said, no, no, a seven is good. A, se- a seven is a good rating because, because even though it has its problems, it does still sound good. But what I am going to do is go back and still, I'm, I'm still going to give it the eight because the crowd was so good on this. So it's getting an eight because of the crowd. All right. Wow, you jumped a whole, a whole number. Seven. Seven for the band. Okay, eight, seven for the eight, band. Eight, for, eight the for the crowd. Well, I I thought the crowd was a nine. I thought the crowd was excellent. The crowd is a ten, but I'm I'm doing like an <laughs> average. I'm doing an average, so you know, Got the, it. The, I'm trying to rate the band, not the crowd. So the crowd participation is raising the average for the band from a seven to an eight. But the crowd, the crowd by itself is a ten. Fair. Um. I liked the, I thought the show was fun. I thought it was there was a lot of positive energy uh, during it. I mean, the, how, there's a wedding going on. Uh, 
How cool is that? That was, that was so much fun to just talk about that. Uh, uh, they're just too cheap to do a real one. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. It, it hey, is very that's cool. That's expensive. It is very cool. <laughs> How many people did they have to get there? there it, it was a handful of people that they brought. I think I read a post about it, the specifics, but apparently not everybody was sitting in the same spot. So, yeah, logistically, yeah. It, it's it's a wild thing. No, it definitely. I was just kidding. It's it's really cool. Not only that, but you got a lot of songs that you don't hear a lot these days. Tremor Christ, No Way, uh, even Leash, um, and those were kind of the highlights that people pointed out when. Uh, when talking about the show, I really I feel like the highlight song obviously for me was was amongst the waves. I think that this version was was awesome. Um, yeah, it definitely was. Uh, and you know, outside of a couple little, uh, you know, sometimes Ed not being a little winded, and sometimes uh, some songs were a little faster than I would have liked. Um, I thought it was good. I give it a seven and a half. Okay. I think that's perfectly fair. Uh, and, and a 10 for the crowd. 10 for the crowd. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. We know good crowds. All right. Let's get into some of the stories here from you guys uh, sharing with us on Facebook. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Tom Palmer. Uh, was second row mic side at the start, but when they went straight in to do the evolution and animal, I ended up five rows in back of Ed. It was a crazy gig. So much fun b- bouncing around. You can tell that just by watching the video. My friend managed to stick in front of Mike and got us some picks. Took it out to play guitar at a drunken party maybe seven years ago, and I never saw that pick again. <laughs> also, we had Nandos that afternoon. I don't know what Nandos is. If somebody can educate me on that, that would be fantastic. About 45 minutes before the gig started, I had to go somewhere pretty urgently. It wasn't fun getting back to my spot after they let the non-Ted Club people in. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Tom. All right. To Warren. Uh, Warren Buckland. Me and Stephanie Buckland were there. I'm going to guess they're married. Uh, was the day England played Estonia in the World Cup. Estonia was in the World Cup? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we got on the train to Dublin up in the afternoon with loads of other Pearl Jam fans. Opened up with sometimes highlights for me as Eric Latimer, shout out to Eric Latimer, says Tremor Christ was a highlight. No way, Real Me is a tag. Amongst the Waves were sung especially well for the wedding party and first dance. Uh, and apparently he says Ed changed some words around for them a bit, uh, which I didn't notice. Uh, and he said also whenever they play Crazy Mary is brilliant, but my favorite moment was Mike jumping down side stage to Ben Harper in a live and going to the solo verse too, too early. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did. So Ben was technically kind of part of the show. There you go. So, <laughs> um, and then somebody takes the opportunity to ask in this forum. I have that poster. If anybody's looking to buy, cool. Not what it's about, but <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you you got an offer. Uh, which it seems like he did get an offer. Um, all right, there were there was um there was a lot of discussion about this poster. <sighs> Let's not spend too much time on it because we it, 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 this is a, this is the end of the show essentially. But you were you were very unhappy about it, and um, you kind of got into a fight with uh, with you know with a patron member by the name of Baba Farrar. Hey, he started it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to fight back if if he starts it. No, you're not allowed to fight back. You're an on air personality. <laughs> you have to take it raw. Um, yeah, you didn't like the poster. But the artwork was fine. But because it didn't say Pearl Jam, you were upset? No, it's because it said Pearl <laughs> Jam and they blocked it with the artwork. Okay. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I just, I might have mentioned this before. I, I, I really, really dislike a lot of Pearl Jam posters because they'll have the poster with the artwork and it'll say Pearl Jam on it, right? Except one letter or an entire word will be completely blocked by a a character or a, 
a snake or a foot or something. And I'm about legibility. And and I was telling I was telling uh, Baba Farrar that this is you know Studio Art 101 day one stuff is you you don't cram stuff in enough to where you're blocking key parts of of your image. You know you there's a million different ways on how you could avoid doing that design wise. And sometimes these artists actively look to completely block out the band name. And I think it's completely counterproductive and it's ugly. It's just ugly. And that's all I'll say. That's, that's my if, opinion. If you were following along on that thread uh, on Facebook, um, I posted a lot of examples. It, it was really funny. And John came back to you and just, it was like the generic notebook notepad on, on, on an iPhone. And it just said, Pearl Jam. And he said, is that legible enough for you? <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought the ones I came up with were a little better. Yeah, whatever. It's, <laughs> my, my uh, post, my posters from the images he gave me, what, what they would look like if, if they were sold at Pearl Jam shows. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't have much an opinion if i like a poster i like a poster i don't care if 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 r is cut off a third if it looks good it looks good i think that was that was a fun poster and i would i would have loved to own it so uh all right let's kick it to uh to the end here Live on Four Legs is happy to present a weekly podcast dedicated to the Pearl Jam Live experience. While we try to get ourselves to as many shows as possible, we have only attended a small fraction compared to the entire live history. That's why we need your help. We want to get to know who you are. If there's a live show that you've attended that you'd like to see us cover in our program, please send us an email at live on four legs. That's the number four live on four legs podcast at gmail.com. We want to know your entire live experience. Did you once miss a flight? Get lucky in the 10 club lottery? Catch a white whale? Your stories will help us mold this into the best podcast it could possibly be. You're already getting to know who we are. Now it's time for us to know who you are. Yeah. Talk to us. Let us know what you want to hear and we are willing to play it. We are willing to cover it. We are willing to dissect it and we're also willing to be a little bit critical about it because that's just sometimes is what happens. But the criticism, it comes with passion as you've seen in some spots today. Uh, So if there is a show that you guys want to talk about or on us to talk about if you want to talk about a show uh sign up to our patreon account uh live on four legs on patreon we uh we if you sign up and donate to our patreon we will uh reward you with coming on an episode talking about your favorite show and hopefully being positive throughout the whole thing i think with the guests we're a lot more positive we let them shine. Well, not only that, but sometimes if it's a show they were at, they, they could bring us into a a perspective outside of just listening to a bootleg and Right. It makes us understand it a little bit more. Yeah. Where this I, we're just we're just critiquing the way they play things and in what order and uh, and it's easy for us to to really tear it apart. Sure. Yeah, that's I think that's really fair. So um, yeah. Uh, a lot of we got a lot of different things in our package uh, for uh, signing up to Patreon, we'll send you a shirt. We will send you um, a bootleg, any of our bootlegs that we've covered. So a lot of stuff going on there. And not, lest I forget, uh, exclusive content on Patreon. Uh, we have two episodes that are exclusively to Patreon right now. Uh, New Year's Eve uh, 1992 and Storytellers, VH1 Storytellers. So uh and we're set to do probably one a month. Uh, I would assume the next one we do is probably going to be record store day at this point. Yeah. Uh, but you know, from there, I think one a month is, is pretty good for some extra content. I think you guys will be pretty happy with that. So that's all you get from Patreon. Um, we got a fun thing going on this week, uh, on Facebook and social media. Uh, check it out. If you're not following us on Facebook, uh, this is the week to do so at Live on Four Legs Podcast. Uh, 
everybody loves the March Madness tournament. Everybody puts fills out their brackets, and then Thursday comes along, and a 15 seed beats a two seed, or a, you know a 10 beats a seven, and you had that seven going to you know the Sweet 16 or whatever, and you know it, it's fun, and everybody tears up their, their brackets and whatever. So um, we want to you know get in on the spirit of the game and. Uh, and do our little own March Madness tournament. And uh, Monday we'll, we'll reveal the brackets. It will be to determine the best live Pearl Jam performance of all time. Single songs, not shows, but they're all, everything will be from different shows. They're, what we're doing is we'll have one side of the bracket, which is 32 songs, be from all shows that we've either covered or are planning to cover within this time that we're doing uh, this tournament. And then on the other side, we're going to do legendary performances. So it's stuff like uh, Black from Unplugged and uh, Porch from Drop in a Park uh, and stuff that like, you know, really resonates with people throughout the years. It's just like the best performance of a certain song or most memorable performance of a certain song of all time. So one side of the other bracket will be that. And then the other side will be like, uh, covers and collaborations. So, um, it'll be, you know, hunger strike with Cornell, uh, uh, you know, the stuff that they did in PJ 20 with, uh, Julian Casablancas or, uh, Josh Homme. Um, or like really rare covers that they almost never touch, like Ain't Talking About Love, which they did at Hartford twice. Uh, stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you the opportunity to vote. Use your power to vote and decide which ones that you like. There'll be certain ones that will be pitted against each other. Uh, as a preview for this show, I believe we're, uh, we're going to be picking Amongst the Waves. So Amongst the Waves might be going up against, I don't know, Porch from Atlanta, which is probably, we're not seeding these things, so don't get all upset. Porch from Atlanta is not a number one seed. No, it's nothing seeded. We're just kind of putting them in and see how how they'll do against other songs. Um, And I kind of want it to be competitive, too, so we'll see how it all plays out. I'm excited for it. It's a lot to take in, but I hope everyone's uh I hope everyone's interested. Yeah. Um all right, quick preview for next week. We got a really special guest coming on. If you haven't listened to her show yet, you should. Uh it's really good. It is uh Jesse Zilka from the Porch Podcast. They've been doing an awesome job, her and Kate Cotton, uh throughout the last couple weeks. And she is from Florida, so she wanted to do a Florida show, and that's why we've landed on West Palm Beach two thousand. Night one from that one. Oh, so that's a, let's get warm. Yeah. Let's get, let's get some fun in the sun. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> so, going. To, I think this is the first time we're we're doing a Florida show. Probably I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, for all you guys down in Florida that um, are enjoying the warm weather, you'll be listening to that podcast outside. I would <laughs> hope, and we'll definitely let her uh, plug her record store a bunch of times. Absolutely, we love, we love record stores, and we love other people's Pearl Jam podcasts. So. We love supporting local record stores. That's what we love. Exactly. Um, And that hopefully will get you guys prepared for Record Store Day coming up in the next month, too. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Uh, That's all I got today. Um, Keep in touch with us. Live on Four Legs Podcast at gmail.com if you want to send us a note saying what shows that you'd like us to cover or just say hi i think you guys are really critical and you guys need to stop you guys need to chill out a little bit or i don't agree with you on anything let's do it let's talk let's debate it it'll be fun uh or follow us on social media we do the same thing there i've been bringing up a lot of different cool discussions on social media lately so i have a lot of that going on and obviously march madness tournament to find out the best live pearl gem performance of all time that'll be happening all this month essentially until March Madness is over. So, yep. All right. This is the point where we say this is the end. We're here, not for much longer. 
And although we may be parting ways, I miss you already. I miss you always. For Matt, for Randy, for the band, and their only and last time in Northern Ireland. I haven't really spoken the Irish accent today, so I gotta, I gotta think of a good last line. Oh, it'd make it good. Mm. Hey, I see here. We're on the Live on Four Legs podcast, and, and we've been doing a good job today. And uh, I think that you should listen in next week, because we have a really good show next week. But uh, before you do that, go into our archive, and go and listen to stuff in our archive. And uh, we have really good episodes there, and uh, top of the day to you. Ta-ta! Bye! Was that Irish? Mm. Well, Swedish. All right. <laughs> My name is Finley, and I love to fight. According to Chandler, what phenomenon scares the bejesus out of him? Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance! That is correct. <laughs> the Irish jig guy? His legs flail about as if independent from his body. <laughs>